<laughs> Man, it's all right. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. I was just checking out my old school flow and shit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? That's dope. I mean, it's all right. I think I could have did better. You think so? Yeah. I, but I, it was a rush. It was a rush job. Okay, I got you. West Coast native, how would you describe the differences in the city now and, let's say, in the 70s? I think that Compton changed a lot. For one thing, um, they were gentrifying Compton right now. So I give it, what, five more years? Compton to be an entirely different place. Um, they still got a, you know, a few neighborhoods. They, f they still got a few neighborhoods, holdout neighborhoods where it's still really hood, but a lot of Compton is getting really expensive. It's becoming a really expensive place to live. First of all, you have to understand that Compton was prime property, bro. It was it was farmland. It, it used to be a swamp. They drained it. You could grow you could grow stuff in Compton like you could grow in in, in Florida. I mean, you know, it's 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 one of the best areas. It's one of the best areas in Los Angeles. Um, when there are earthquakes, when the big earthquakes come, nothing happens to Compton. Compton is it's very the way it sits on and the kind of bedrock it sits upon. It don't we don't have problems in Compton. Um, when it rains, it doesn't flood in Compton. It, flood, it floods in Carson, huh? It flood, it flood in Carson. It floods in Long Beach, LA. It don't flood in Compton. Compton is Compton is perfect, cool. perfect little city the way it's made. So it's it's it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what Compton is like in in ten years. Looking forward to this. I don't know. I don't know if I am or not. I, I, in a perfect world, Compton would be like it was in the 90s without all the bullshit. And everybody in Compton have money and, and no drugs and just you know, be like Santa Monica in a perfect world. Julio Iglesias. <laughs> How would you describe the origin of this nickname? That that only lasted for like fifteen twenty minutes. Okay. Somebody said that one time. I mean, it, we you know after that day it, it was never even spoke of again. So it's always just been Coolio. Uh -huh. um, that wasn't my first rap name though. For real. My first rap name was something else. <laughs> I, I don't know if you know. So I'm probably not gonna tell you, but it wasn't Coolio. <laughs> it actually was. It was. It was Boo. That was my first rap name. It was. It was Boo. Boo Daddy. Yeah, I know it sounds stupid, huh? but yeah, that was my first rap name. Yeah, and but there it, were like a lot of daddies in there, probably. Yeah. Exactly. So classic. You know, that was. That was the. That was the. That was the '80s, though. You know. And um, I. The Coolio came around like eighty. I think I, I think they first named me Coolio probably around eighty four. It might have done about eighty, maybe eighty one, because when I started doing the when I started doing the new school stuff and the Soundmaster crew stuff, they was calling me Coolio already. So. So you're obviously a musician, music composer, also a chef, actor. So you you know you can be easily called an artist. But what I wanted to know is your personal definition of the word artist. I think an artist can be anything. You could be you could be really good at painting cars. And be an artist. You could be you could be good at making furniture and being an artist. Um, I'm an entertainer. I don't, you know, I'm a, I'm a recording artist. But I'm I'm more than that now. I'm an entertainer because I I do I try to do all aspects of of entertainment, you know, television, film, uh, music. So that makes I think that makes me more of an entertainer than an artist these days. American Hustle Life. You stepped in the role of a mentor. 
what's your take on this experience on this show in particular which, which, which show? American Hustle Life what the hell is that Hustle Life you yeah. said yeah, yeah, yeah. talking about talking about T.I. show what you say I don't know what you're talking about uh, the show you've been in the role of a mentor, you know, for some Korean guys. Oh! Uh, <laughs> that rings a bell. That was weird, bro. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. It was it was fun, but at the same time, something very dramatic, was something life-changing happened with me during that time. Um, somebody I have been working with for a long time, I, I, he was stealing from me. For real. And that's when I that's when I brought it out. I, Cause I knew before that, but that's when I brought it out because he tried to try to take a lot. He tried to take too much. And man, I could. I was that close to being on the run, homie. That close, cause I. Cause I won't. I, I won't never go to prison. But I would go on the run for killing a motherfucker, you know. Um, and you know, I'm holding court in the streets whenever they catch me because I don't do prison. I go to jail for a night, but doing years in prison, I said I don't do that. You know, I rather I rather have court on the streets. But this motherfucker stole from me, and I and I found out how much he stole from me over the years, and it all stemmed from that. Um, they paid me. They paid me a good amount of money, and the uh, the original agent who set it up called me, and we was just having a conversation. He said, "By the way, I'm gonna send you X amount of dollars." I said, "Wait, wait, wait, hold up." I said, "How much?" He said, "Bubba," I said, "Hey," I said, "Don't send that motherfucker ghost another dime." Don't I know you probably heard of Ghost. He's on a couple of my records. Don't send that motherfucker another dime. I finally you stealing from me, bro. And <laughs> he told me one amount, and it really was another amount. When I asked him how much we was getting paid for that, so he, yeah, he was trying to get me real good. That's fucked up. <laughs> Absolutely fucked up. Hey, but hey, you know, hey. He's a fucking loser. When you're a loser, that's just how it is, bro. You know? Okay, so just the last thing. Is there anything you want to share with our viewers or Polish people in general, like a message? If you hear this, hopefully you was at the show at uh, XOXO. Better known as Sexo. <laughs> Why? Because we sexo. Um, if you weren't, then fuck you. And the other thing is, is that... Uh, Saka Zulu, man. Do your thing. You know, try to try to find your way. Try to find your way, you know. I know it's hard, you know, and I know it's not easy to be an individual. It's not easy to 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 try to do something different or try to make a change. But try anyway, you know. And if, you know, the, the biggest risk of all is not to take a risk at all. So that's what I will say to you with, you know, with some good parting words and drop some knowledge on your punk ass. That's all. Much appreciated.